What is going on? It's Brycat23 here with X Trades. Today I'm going to walk you through a really detailed analysis of what's happening with Roku right now. So if you saw one of the videos from earlier this week with Datadog, this is going to be a very similar format where I just kind of really walk you through recent price action and near term and longer term expectations of future price movements based on recent trends. So Roku and Datadog do have some similarities. Again, they might not be in the same industry per se, but they are definitely in the same sector. So you're going to see this inverse head and shoulder a lot in the tech space uh, as of recent. So really what we have going here is a pretty is a pretty strong downtrend over the course of the last two or three months. Obviously, there's, there's a descending trend line that we're really going to have to pay attention to. And that's where that neckline is forming for this inverse head and shoulders. So that's the key level that we have to break. But again, off of this descending trend line, we're forming this inverse head and shoulders. And there is a higher likelihood. I don't know the exact numbers, but when you do have a descending trend line, there is a slightly higher likelihood that it does break out bullish. Uh, rather than like a flat uh, neckline or even a rising neckline if you were trading uh, a rising inverse head and shoulders. So the fact that we have this inverse head and shoulders on a downslope is actually beneficial in terms of us having the breakout that we expect to have. So that's kind of the first thing. The next thing is, again, just like Datadog, looking at our left shoulder, versus our right shoulder, our right shoulder saw a much smaller retracement. So we have that relative strength of buyers versus sellers growing on this right shoulder as we're getting ready for this breakout. So it's really nice to see just the improvement in the bias of these buyers at this price level relative to our resistance is much stronger for buyers than it was back in you know late April. So it's nice to see this kind of lesser reaction to this trend line or this neckline and a nice recovery after pulling back and falling behind this horizontal support of you know 339, 340. And furthermore, when we actually take a look at, at this kind of horizontal support, after we kind of broke down from it on the initial rejection of this trend line uh, resistance, we obviously fell below this 339, we gapped down below it, and then we formed a reversal. And once we reclaimed it, we kind of based out here for a little bit. And there was really low volume. I mean, you weren't seeing very many large moves in price. But then after we finally got rid of kind of the sellers and, and improvement and bias shifted, we got a really nice bullish candle here and we got a lot of volume associated. So it's nice to see us using that support to push forward and to push towards that neckline as the two converge because we have this flat horizontal resist or flat horizontal support and this neckline resistance that are converging. So it's really nice to see just a strong reaction from the buyers off of this support zone, uh, just heading into this uh, heading into this neckline resistance as prices are getting tighter. So that is definitely a good sign in my opinion. And obviously we closed just below neckline resistance today. We tested higher, but obviously we rejected it. And, and there was bound to be a little bit of selling pressure at 351 just again, because that was where we kind of had the most most active volume when we rejected initially and fell back down to form this right shoulder. So really overall, it was a good trading day that we had and, and really nice volume and a healthy candlestick leading into this neckline resistance. So I would really expect us to break out tomorrow. I'd, I'd be very surprised if we didn't. But again, we could see some resistance at this kind of 351 price area, just a little bit of resistance potentially. And then we are also going to have to watch for this 356 price level. This is really the area that I'm a little more worried about in the near term, because obviously we had very large wicks uh, when we tested this previously, uh, kind of when this right shoulder initially rejected. 
So even though there wasn't a huge amount of selling pressure, uh, except for maybe this candle, there was some good selling pressure, but on the next one, there wasn't a massive amount of selling pressure relative to kind of average volume. But again, just seeing the reaction to that price level and the series pullback and, and kind of how closely the open and closes happened, despite price having traveled all the way up to 356, that definitely tells me that there's a lot of sensitivity in that area. And then furthermore, if we flip on the Bollinger Bands, this also can just give you an idea. It kind of has convergence with these Bollinger Bands. And obviously this is the four hour session. So it's not quite the daily. So the daily would be a little bit different. But again, price is pretty sensitive to the outside of these Bollinger Bands on these longer time frames, on this four hour time frame. So again, this is something where we have a convergence with both just a horizontal resistance area and this Bollinger Band area. So there could be some wonkiness in price once we get to this 357, 356 price level. So I'm gonna turn the Bollinger Bands off now just because I think they kind of clutter things a little bit. But again, that kind of just gives you an idea of really near term what I'm expecting in price. So I would love to see us hit that 356 price level when we do get breakout. And I think that the opening bell should bring us enough volume to really push prices higher through this neckline. Unless the market really recedes and we gap down, I don't really think that we're gonna stay in this trend line resistance area. And I think we're gonna break over that trend line tomorrow, ideally, um, and, see a nice, uh, and see a nice move to the upside. Just again, based on a really good session we had today with good buyers showing up, getting ready to take this, take this ticker higher. In terms of the longer term price goals, again, we have this inverse head and shoulders. The height of it is about $60, $65. And we know that the percentage meeting price target for inverse head and shoulders is about 70%. So that puts my long-term projected move right around $45. So obviously that's a, that's a large move. It's lofty expectations, but Roku really can move large large prices over just any given period of time and in a day it could move 20 25 dollars so uh 45 dollars i think is definitely realistic again based on just the duration of this consolidation phase but i do think that it will take probably two months for us to reach that price target it's not going to be in one fell swoop um, again i'm basing that off of the duration of this consolidation phase seeing that we started back in uh, essentially two months ago on, on the 10th, 13th of April. And so that's kind of what my expectations are longer term is really that 390 to 395 range. I, I wouldn't go for the full $45 price move as a price target again, because this resistance that I'm looking at here where we're breaking out of this, uh, where we're breaking out of this downtrend it should break out right around 350. So that's where we're calculating our price target from. So taking that 350 on top of this $45 move would put us at like 290 to 295. And that's why I don't wanna hold on to it for you know a, a 395 price target uh, or even a 400 price target, depending on where, uh, where you have your trend lines drawn because where we first formed this neckline we are bound to see some resistance. There's definitely gonna be some selling pressure there, even over the course of the next month or two, if prices make a really solid rebound after breaking out of this, there is definitely gonna be some selling pressure at this 390 price level. Uh, again, just because that's really where our downtrend began. Um, so I would definitely mark that as my outside price target over the next two months, but, my nearer term price target for the next week is really that 356 price zone. So that's really what I'm hoping for. And frankly, what I'm expecting in the near term. Once we break above that, we definitely could see a really bullish move in price as there aren't too many key levels until we get towards that 368, 370 price level uh, where prices have shown sensitivity. So really breaking through that 356 price level is kind of the key move in the near term. And then we could see 370 in the near future and much longer term over the next two months, 
we could see that 390 longer term price target being realized. But again, definitely be cautious once we get past there and make sure to set up profit taking along the way as these price targets and sentiment could change over time. So definitely make sure that uh, you're constantly evaluating the trade that you decide to enter. So at any rate, I hope you like the information that I shared with you on Roku and the Roku setup. If you guys have any questions about it uh, or want any additional information, please let me know. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining. And I hope that you have a great day.